Okay guys, if you're new here, this style of video and that kind of title is not my usual thing at all. Um, but if you just bear with me and stick around, I'm going to show you why it might be now. Check this out. <laughs> I know that's kind of a little bit away from the title of the video, but it will come round in a full circle probably. Um, last week I put out a video about an unattenuated versus attenuated signal, and um, after the video I kind of just took the attenuator and plugged straight in, and that was that clip you just heard then. That was the all amp into guitar. There was quite a few messages asking about me if I had anything in the chain, because there was a black lead coming from my guitar and, and a green lead going to the amp. That was just the springy end of the, of the cable, um, nothing more than that, no, no tricks, no cloaks and daggers. It was honest, it was pure tone. And just as a little, um, I don't even know what the right word is. Just as a little, I guess, what is the right word? Whatever the word is I'm looking for. Um, the the strat into the vibe of it is, is magical and probably won't be, you know, and it, I can't see that I can get an nicer tone than that for me personally. Um, but the video isn't about that. I thought after I heard and I listened to that back, I thought, well, I've got this PV uh, Classic 30 that I've done quite a bit of work to quietly. Um, you know, I've, I've upgraded the reverb tank, uh, which makes a huge difference. If you guys have got any PV Classic 30s out there, do, do this tank mod, man. It came to me with the normal two spring and it was just lacking. Um, so I put the free spring in there and it's just so much different. It, it eliminated the, the, the hum of the cab as well. The two spring for some reason uh, carried a, a hum in it. Um, but as soon as I put this free spring in, and I did upgrade all the tubes and NOS pre tubes and a better Sovtech um, power tube section. Um, the reverb was just outstanding. And as I said, I also upgraded some of the capacitors inside that looked a bit faulty. Um, not a full surface, a soft surface because they, they're really, really tough to work on. And the cage, I um, reinforced the cage so we got rid of the tube brow. And, and after I'd done all this, I thought, well, can, can I make it sound as good as perhaps or close to the vibe verb? And then I was looking through YouTube and I came across this video. And I was like, ah, someone's beat me to it. Even though it wasn't in the title, you know, somebody had beat me to it. And, and how I kind of got on this thing is that, you know, I've been a Mayer fan before I even realized it was cool not to like Mayer. And I think, I, I personally, I don't get that. I f how can, you know, what's the deal with that? He, the guy is incredible. Like him or not personality, he is just an incredible guitarist and, and an amazing songwriter. I, I personally, I think like a, he should be a hero of our generation. Um, and, and I love him, and I've got no problem saying that either. So I was listening to the um, Slow Dancing in the Burning Room, and I thought, that's a song I've never tried to work out. So I just put it on, I played along, it was brilliant. Then I shot that clip, and then I thought, all right, I'll try it on the PV. And I thought, gee, you know, this is getting pretty close. How close can we get to that Burning Room tone on the PV Classic 30? So yeah, I've done a lot of work on this amp. We're gonna run through it now and we're gonna see how it sounds. We're gonna try and get close to that burning room tone and uh, let's get stuck into the video. Woo. Okay guys, so we're gonna get stuck straight in. Um, I'm gonna play on the neck pickup and the neck and in between. I'm pretty sure that he plays right there uh, in that position, which if you don't own a Strat would give you a bit more kind of uh, out of phase kind of top end position. I'm going to begin with the noon, uh, sorry, the, all the EQ presets on noon and very little reverb. And then um, I'm going to dial the reverb up, going to play with the EQ and we're going to see how close we can get. I have read that John scoops his mids um, and I think that sounds all right in a band mix, but on its own it sounds kind of weak. Uh, just my opinion. Um, but we'll, we'll try and get as close as we can, okay? Let's, uh, let's begin. So all at noon. Finger style. <laughs> Sounds 
So that's that's not a bad start, starting point. Let's try that neck. So the neck is a bit bolder, but definitely uh, less less burning room tone. Let's go back again. Sorry. So I think I think just straight away that's that's a pretty nice tone. Uh, there's probably not enough in the top and in the bottom, and to my taste, there's. Definitely not enough of that reverb. There's that slap, bam, bam, boom, slap, and that slap needs to be heavy reverb. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to dial up the reverb, okay? So let's uh, let's see how we can get that to sound. That might be a little bit too much, but we'll try it. My mistake. We'll try it. So to me, that's sounding a ton better. Uh, you could probably take it a little bit further or a little bit less um, to taste, but um, on his live stuff, it kind of varies from his recorded stuff. But that, that's a pretty that's pretty expansive reverb right there. definitely got that that splash that we like right so uh let's let's get stuck in and start moving around with the eq um i think that the the bass is kind of uh, there enough maybe we'll try scooping the mids first and then up in the trap i'll see how that sounds Okay, so we've took the mids down and we've raised the treble. That's getting definitely closer. I think, weirdly, with the PV, it almost likes the neck more than the neck and middle. Uh, and on reflection, it's definitely the neck and middle. It's, it's close, it's close, but uh, to me now it's lacking body, but you've definitely got that more sparkle in the end. So um, let's bring the mid back up and take the treble up and take the bass down a bit. Okay, so this classic 30 for you who don't know, this is a 15 inch speaker. Uh, 15 inch speakers are my favorite all day long. Uh, once you play the 15 inch and you feel like the, the overall spectrum, it's kind of hard to get away from it. Uh, 15 inch just works for me. So they can, and they inherently carry quite a lot of bass. Um, so, you know, I've seen players just actually have the bass right off on this and get good tones. But yeah, I'm, I'm kind of going off, off the topic, but let's see how this sounds. Uh... So there's definitely more spank there straight away. Mm -hmm. 
that that in the room is pretty convincing. Um, that's sounding really, really good. Let's 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 bring the bass just back up a little bit. Try that. See now that's brought the attack back on the bass, which is kind of nice. There's not enough body in the middle, and and the, tr the snappiness of the treble is there. Yeah, my uh, slippery fingers there. This is the first time I played today. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of there. It's pretty damn close. Pick. We'll play with a pick now. I'm 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 thinking we're pretty close. To me, that's sounding that's sounding in the room. It's sounding good. I don't know if that's coming across in the camera, but it's it's sounding mighty close. Um, if there was one thing I would have to do, uh, I would try putting a bit more top. Let's try Let's try and add some more troubling. So I've maxed out the treble now um, and we were going to see how that sounds. So that's that's got the nice snap and attack that I'm used to. It's, this might be a bit bright, but when you play uh, black faces all the time, then they've kind of got that snap and attack in the chime in the top end. That's that's what my ear is obviously trained to. But um, to me, this feels closer. We'll do fingers and then we'll do pick. That, that feels very, very close in the room. Uh, let's try for pick. There could be a bit too much mid in that. Um, it, that's taken away from the top end, but for me, that's sounding pretty cool, pretty pretty close. Um, so we've we've EQ'd the amp in, um, we've added the reverb, and now that's a pretty convincing tone that I think you could get away with quite comfortably if you were to gig with it, and certainly sounds pretty close to me. Um, let's give it one more go.
That's uh, that's sounding pretty cool. So what we're going to do now, guys, okay, I'm going to just create a little backing track, and I'm going to show you what this amp can do if we add a bit of drive to it, okay? Um, but in a nutshell, can we get close to Mayotone with a PV Classic 30? Upgraded a little bit? I think we can. Uh, make sure to let me know below what you think, guys, okay? Um, if you think that sounded like it or if you think it sounded garbage, um, you know, constructive criticism is always always welcomed. And this is the first style of video I've done in this way. And if there's any other players we could perhaps look at, you know, we certainly can. I've certainly looked at Doyle Bramall, look back through the catalogue, you'll see him. Uh, for now, this is Richie from Fret Junkies, and I really do appreciate every one of you being here. Thank you so much. Stay safe, Richie. Peace.